Hello and welcome back again. Uh, in the previous part, I have shown you how to do diff two different kinds of interaction. And in the second part, we learned how to do a better kind of interaction just by adding a simple interface. And in this part, I will show you how to use this interaction to open and close locked doors. So far, we have only try this interaction out with the objects that don't require any extra information such as uh, key information as the lock door will so as you can see in unity i have created a door and at the moment it's just a cube it doesn't do anything we will make it open and close the same way as the gate did so let's start with creating the animation with and what is important with the door with a door that you want to animate is that if you're checking you can see that the pivot point is in one of the corners in this case in this bottom left corner so when you're doing a door you want the pivot point to be somewhere along the left or right edge because if you rotate it it will rotate around the pivot so if the pivot is in the middle or somewhere then it will rotate around the middle and then it will open on bo both this side and this side so make sure that your pivot points are in one of the corners or along the edges so let's create an animation go to the animations folder and press the door go to the animations tab and create let's call the animation open door uh, press the record button Rotate it and back to start and um, create the first key point. Go forward about almost half a second or so and create the next keyframe. We go minus 90 degrees, like so, and then uncheck record, record and it's done. You can see the door is opening. Let's create another script um, clip. Let's call it close door. Right, let's turn it minus 90 degrees to start with because this is the starting point for the close. Rotate it. Oh, press the record button. Rotate it and back. So it's um, the first key frame is started. And then move along in timeline and then change the angle to zero and it's closed. And uncheck. Great. Now let's go to the animator of this you can see that we have the bo both of the clips open and close door let's create an other empty state and make it the default state also create two triggers one for open and one for close from the new empty state make a transition to open door it will trigger on open and then from open, make a transition to close. It will trigger on close. And from close back to open, which will trigger on open. And this is it. This is the state machine for our uh, door. Let's go back into the scene. Press on the door. Or first, go back to the project and make sure that the door animations open and close door you uncheck the loop time on them close door uncheck otherwise they will loop then go to the door see that it has the animator it has it's unchecked so let's check it all right then we create a new script for the door go to our scripts folder Door. Now remember that the door will be an interactable object, so we need to implement I interactable, and then it requires us to implement the method called interact void interact. So and the door script will be the same as for the orange switch the gate open and close so 
So let's just create the game from start. We need a reference to our animator. Private animator animator. And in the awake method, we grab the reference animator get component either like so. And we also need the boolean variable to check if the door is open or close. Um, private bool and like we did before if is open if the door is open already animator dot set trigger close and remember to set the boolean variable to false then else if the door is closed then we will open it Let's set trigger open and is open is equal to two. All right, go back to Unity. Make sure you attach the new script to the door. And also make sure that the door is on the interactable layer and as we did before, we check no on this. We don't want to set the children to be on the interactable layer. If you don't remember why, you can check the part one of the video again. And the door seems to be open by default right now. So let's set it to zero so it's closed. And see if the, work, uh, the door works without the key to begin with. And we can see that the ev event cursor is changing. So the interaction is working. So if we press E, it opens. And it closes again. Perfect. Let's now implement the key. And so far, or the thing we need now when we uh, require a key is information about the player's inventory to see if the so that the door can know if the player that is trying to interact with it actually has the right to interact with it. And so far we have in the orange and pink switch they didn't require any information about the player whatsoever they just interact they just allowed anyone to interact with them but the door is different if it's locked so somehow we need to reference the inventory and this really depends on the game you have and what design you have chosen when where your inventory is put so for instance perhaps your inventory is a static inventory manager then we would perhaps check uh, it like this in pseudocode inventory dot instance dot and then instance the inventory manager would have a method called contains key and then we will send it oh, we need to create a variable for our key so let's say that this door requires a key with id 1 otherwise we won't open so in the pseudocode we will send it the key id and then we will get a boolean back if it's true or not and this inventory manager would handle all of the player's inventory and this would work it's very simple to do and what is bad with this is that firstly what happens if it's a multiplayer game well the door doesn't know which player it is interacting with so it wouldn't know which inventory it should ask for the key so this wouldn't work as simply as this and also if we are thinking in the real world if you have an inventory it's probably your backpack or something and it's sitting on you it's not some backpack up in the cloud or something that everyone has access to it's sitting on you so really the inventory shouldn't be a static instance it should be a component on our player then instead of this we would be using we need we would require a reference to our player and then there from the player get the component inventory 
and run the contains key method and send it the key ID. And this is the way we will be using. So what we require here is a reference to our player and how will we will get it. Well, we could use find player by tag or name or something, but that is not very performant and it's also uh, we, we will get back to the issue we had with the static inventory manager what happens if it's a multiplayer how will we know which player to look for so instead we will be going back to our i interactable interface and put game object uh, interacting object here so now we are required to send the interacting object to the objects that we are trying to interact with. We could have actually only sent in the inventory component instead of the entire game object, but imagine a case, for instance, where the door is a bathroom door and it requires you to have the gender male to enter. Then we would, ne we would need a stat from the player instead of something in his inventory or even a door that requires perhaps 50 in strength to open. So to get access to the stats as well, we send in the entire game object, then the door can decide for itself what he needs. So, so inside the orange switch, we need to now add the interacting object. Let's copy paste this. We need to do the same for the pink switch. And the same for the door. And also in the play controller where we are actually using the interact method. We need to send ourselves or the player object. So the object which this player controller script is sitting on. Alright. And now as you can see the orange and pink switch. They don't give a damn who is interacting with them. They just do what they are supposed to do no matter who is interacting with them. So this, they're just ignoring this parameter and that's fine. But for the door, we will actually use this parameter to see if the player has the key. Okay, let's create the inventory script. Inventory. And set it on the player. Great, go inside and remove everything. And now, remember, this is a dummy inventory, it won't be having any information about anything other than what keys the player are having at the moment. Let's make a list of keys that the player has private list int key IDs. And then we will create the method public contains bool contains key that takes an integer key ID. And here we will check if our list of key IDs contains the key ID that it's getting. Or rather we will return the value of this. So if this list contains this, it will return true, otherwise it will return false. And this is really all we will be needing in our inventory for now, for this tutorial. If we then go back to the door, we can use the player, wrap everything around an if, if interacting object, that is our player, get component inventory, dot contains key actually we should first check if our if the component exists because maybe it's an npc or enemy without an inventory trying to interact with our door let's make it like this instead uh, inventory 
inventory equal to interacting object dot get component interacting uh, inventory if inventory not equal to null then we will be doing stuff and everything should be inside of this and otherwise we'll we can write a message for now debug dot log uh, no inventory found we shouldn't come to this point for our example but you might want to do this for your game then inside of this we will check if inventory dot contains key send it key id then we will run this code and then else if no key was found debug dot log wrong key all right so if we have an inventory the if the interacting object has an inventory we will check if the inventory contains the key that is required to open this door if it is then we will open the door if it's not then we will write wrong key let's go inside okay everything is set let's try it remember we didn't give the player any keys at the moment so it should be let's do it like this so we should see a message saying that we have the wrong key great now if we give our player the correct key with the id1 we should be able to open the door perfect see now everything works and this is how you should be making a locked door that is depending on your inventory to have the right key and this will work in a multiplayer game as well and it should be used using the i interactable interface because it's it will really make your interacting code simpler so i hope you found this helpful and i see you again later bye bye